Welcome to Physics Next Book. In this video, let us look at the textbook way of demonstrating the Lorentz contraction or length contraction effect of special relativity, where the length of an object turns out to be shorter than its rest frame length according to the measurements done from a uniformly moving frame. Instead of our usual space-time diagram approach, here we shall simply employ the Lorentz transformation equations to get to the length contraction relation. This is, so to speak, the standard way of proving length contraction, or so it says in the books. Turns out that we need to use the Lorentz transformation equations carefully, in a specific manner. If we do it wrong, well, you'll see what happens if we do it wrong. But before we begin, let me introduce the Lorentz factor gamma, which is just the inverse of the square root appearing in the denominator of the Lorentz transformation equations, to make them look a little less cumbersome. Okay. Now we are ready to get to the length contraction effect. So first things first, the rest frame length of a stick is measured by ourselves. So we are the observers in a frame is 0 where the stick appears to be static. So the rest length or proper length of the stick is the length measured by ourselves, the S0 observers. This is just the difference of the space coordinates of the two endpoints of the stick. So a simple x2 minus x1, let's say L0. Now, to the observers in another inertial frame S1, moving uniformly at a speed v with respect to r S0, our stick appears to be moving in the opposite direction with the same speed v. So to measure the length of the stick from S1, they have to note the space coordinates of its two endpoints simultaneously, so that the difference x2 prime minus x1 prime gives the correct length of the stick say L1 as measured in S1 frame. The crucial condition here is simultaneity in S1 frame. That is, both the coordinate readings must be taken at the same time instant according to the S1 frames clock. Imagine if there is a time lapse instead, say T2 prime minus T1 prime, between the measurements of the two ends, the stick would have moved a distance V into T2 prime minus T1 prime, resulting in an obvious erroneous value of the length. So, for the moving frame length measurement, one needs to impose the additional condition t1 prime minus t2 prime equals 0 or t2 prime minus t1 prime equals 0. Now, to relate the lengths measured in the two frames, we need to express L1 which is x2 prime minus x1 prime in terms of L0 which is x2 minus x1. Obviously, we should use the Lorentz transformation equations for x2 prime and x1 prime that will help us relate the difference L1 to x2 minus x1 equals L0. But Lorentz transformation equations also involve time coordinates. So what we get is L1 in terms of L0 and T2 minus T1. Now an important thing about this T2 minus T1 that relativity texts do not emphasize enough but we need to note is the following. Though the S1 frame observers note down the space coordinates of the two endpoints of the stick simultaneously according to their S1 frame clocks. We in S0 see them taking these readings at different time instants T2 and T1 according to our S0 frame clocks. This is because the perception of simultaneity in inertial frame S1 is different from what we perceive in inertial frame S0. This we have discussed and established in details in an earlier video. You can check it from the i button and description. Anyway, the T2 minus T1 appearing in the expression of L1 should thus be non zero. If we by mistake put T2 minus T1 equals 0 here, well, see what happens. We get L1 equals gamma L0. And because the Lorentz factor gamma is always greater than 1, this makes L1 longer than L0, meaning we have got length extension instead of length contraction, an obvious goof up. So, be careful not to impose T2 minus T1 equals 0 here. We should rather impose the simultaneity condition of the S1 frame, that is T2 prime minus T1 prime equals 0. What does it do? Once we use the Lorentz transformation equations for T2 prime and T1 prime, this condition tells us the value of T2 minus T1 in terms of x2 minus x1 or L0. Using this back into the expression for L1, we have it totally in terms of L0. After a little window dressing and noting that the factor in the parenthesis is inverse of the gamma squared, this equation now correctly represents the Lorentz contraction or length contraction effect. As you can see, the Lorentz factor, which we know is always greater than 1, now multiplies with L1, the measured length in the moving frame, making it shorter than L0, the rest frame length. 
So do you see why we need to be careful while using the Lorentz transformation equations or any formula so to speak? Because if we don't relate to what is physically going on behind the math, we can potentially run into trouble. The Lorentz transformation equations, if applied correctly, does demonstrate the length contraction effect in a mathematical way. But if you want a more physical perspective on this, watch this video on the right. See you there. Bye-bye.